All right, Shalom, Makim, Shalom. Hey, Yabashimau, Shai, Brakatham, to my dear brothers out there. Our praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, and Daban said, Elder Apostles of the Great Millstone. All right, welcome back to another current events, prophecy, and madness. And the subtitle with this one's going to be America Will Make You Retarded. All right. And when you look up the word retard, it, it literally just means to be slow. And that's exactly what America would do to you. It will make you slow. It'll make you mentally go backwards. All right, it's it's August 30th, 2023. This year is basically done. We're in the last quarter of the year. The Heavenly Father is exposing the hell out of the self-proclaimed white man, the American government, the society. And he's basically just shaming it. Matter of fact, let's play this first video that the Spirit led me to first. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of America? School shootings. <laughs> We're downtown Iceland today with the Wand of Wisdom for Reykjavik's 237th birthday. We're going to be interviewing the Icelandic people who are some of the nicest in the entire world and see what their thoughts on America and Americans are. All right, today's question is, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word America? Basketball. Yes, or PCD. Yeah. Basketball. Shooting. School shootings. <laughs> Food. Food? School yeah. shootings. Damn. Mm -hmm. Say that again? School shootings. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What type of food? Like unhealthy foods. Unhealthy? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Okay, there... okay. What are like another two things, maybe? Um, when beer. You hear beer? Yeah, and Captain Morgan. Um, First thing. Wheat. Weed? The American <laughs> flag and like uh, Target and Target. Stuff. Oh, I love Target. I miss Target so yes. much. I don't know. Just the flag? <laughs> the flag. Stupid uh, people. No, great, great, people. Greatest, greatest, stupid and greatest people. country ever. Great, greatest country ever. Great, what? Greatest country ever. Greatest country ever. Nice job. Obese people. Obese? Well, okay. Uh, God's tourist. Money. Money. And Absolutely. <laughs> just, just fat people. Fat. Uh, freedom. Freedom? Freedom. Yeah, freedom. Uh, fat. Fat. Hood. Hood. And what, what kind of hood? Like, hoodie or like... Like gang. Bang, bang, you know what I'm saying? What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of America? <laughs> so as your brethren can see, this guy, this guy did like a public survey asking people questions about what did they first think when they see America? I forget what people this was. He said it in the beginning, but nonetheless, these people are a reflection of everybody else that's in the world, that's outside of America, that's looking in. And it's, it's like you heard all nothing but majority of negative connotations, negative remarks. That's why it's titled America will make you retarded. Now, I tried to write down as quick as I can the things I was hearing. I heard obesity. Some of the people said obesity up to three times. Three different people said obesity. Food. School shootings. I heard that about three times. Unhealthy food, Donald Trump, beer, Captain Morgan, Target, fat people. I heard fat people about three times. Hood gang banging. That's what these people, all these little young children, when they heard about America, um, when they think about it, that's what the that's what they said. Going to show you that the Heavenly Father is basically exposing. The wickedness of America, the, the folly, the shame of America, man. And it, and it sucks because we have to live smack dead in the middle of it. We're in the middle of obesity and unhealthy food and Donald Trump and beer and Captain Morgan and hoods. The list goes on. This is them, them speaking from the outside of what's going on in the inside. This place is terrible, man. And these people around the world see it. This Isaiah 47 and 1. It says, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldees. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So when when I seen certain clips of like the, 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 the middle 1900s, 
People thought America was like gold. Everybody wanted to come to America. They thought the streets were paved with gold in the, in the 1900s. Now we're in the 2000s. People was like, shoot, them people are fat over there. They obese. And they're not lying. So now, like I said, O virgin daughter of Babylon, which is America, come sit on the ground, which means to be at a very low estate. Come sit in the dust, which means to be in a confused low estate. There was no throne. Basically, America is not the big hunk no more of the planet Earth. And it's not it's no more be called being called tender and delicate. And everybody's everybody around the world is not quick to run to to come to America. Now you see there's a passport bros and and whatnot. You got the Americans trying to leave America to go check out other spots. It says, take a millstone and grind mill, uncover the locks, make bare the thigh, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers, thy nakedness should be uncovered. Yea, thy, same, thy shame should be seen. I will take vengeance. I will not meet thee as a man. So basically, when they talk about uncover the, the locks and make bare the thigh and everything of the sort, that's the Lord basically showing all your shame. Now that the internet is out there, everybody's able to see what's going on in America. And when they, they all they see is a bunch of fat people and uh, what was that list I wrote down? A bunch of fat people, unhealthy foods. They see Donald Trump. They see beer. They see targets. They see hood and game banging. You know, <laughs> shameful. You know, let's go to this next thing we have cute here. Tell me I'm not about to do this to the grade skill, man. 81 to 100 is an A. 61 to 80 is a B. 41 to 60 is a C. A D is 21 to 40, and the F is 0 to 20. Bro, this shit should have been in school when I was in school. I'm borderline stoop grade skill like this. I could have graduated with honors, damn it. Like this, if you still making an F, dog, you a vegetable. Hey, I was a CD student in grade school. Just imagine if the grade scale was like this. Man, I'd be going to Harvard with my GPA. You know this about the cause for a bunch of people to be in places that they don't need to be. You gonna have surgeons that's supposed to be janitors and shit. Hey, what's that little string right at? It's a vein, sir. Hell yeah, cut that and tie that together. Talking about future scientists and chemists here, damn it. See, I know I gotta work eight hours, but if I make some good dope for y'all, y'all gonna let me go home early. I happen to exceeding expectations. Nigga, I could play any minute, mine, and more and still make a C. Imagine being the smartest nigga in the school and you're in special ed. This is what this grade skill shows. Bro. Excuse me, you know, Jake, you know, Jake got to make a joke out of everything. <laughs> you in honors. <laughs> you in honors class, but you in special ed. You know what I mean? But look at this now. Look what's going on. They're lowering the, the, um, the chart for A, B, C, D, and F. The grade rates. So now an A is from 81% to 100. When I was growing up, uh, anything in the 80s was, was a B. And you had a B plus if you were like 89. And an A was from 90% to 100. And you had an A minus if you was at 90. You know? So they have to degrade uh, the scoring system because these children are not meeting their requirements. So you can see as generations been coming and going, they've been slowly beginning dumbed down and dumbed down and dumbed down and dumbed down. Slowly but surely. To where now the grade, the scoring, the scoring had to be lowered. And you, you could tell. You can see it in the actions of the children. Look at how they, they don't think. This new generation especially, they don't think. They like, they're little monsters as the scriptures explain them. They really have mental issues. So this is, this is crazy, man. This is Sirach 10 to 3. It says, an unwise king destroyeth his people. 
But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the sea, the city shall be inhabited. So Esau and Edom is destroying the generations, the children to come. He'll tell you, y'all, Esau and Edom is a self proclaimed white man. But he'll tell you that he's for the children and it's all about the children. But then he's making them um, slower. He's giving them these phones, this internet access. And all they want to care about is the is what's going on on social media and not worrying about uh truth that the or the education you saw giving them so now they gotta lower the scoring re records man so the unwise king destroyeth his people you see it says the power of the earth is in the hand of the lord and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable so at the end of the day yahweh shai coming and he goes he gonna just fix everything He's the one that's profitable. And everybody's IQs are going to raise up when Yahweh Shai come back. You know? But as we see Esau ruling, everybody's IQ was getting lower and lower. America will make you retarded, right? Let's play this next thing we have queued here. Check this out. You don't raise your children the way we do. I mean, a nine-year-old boy in Gaza is more of a man than a 25-year-old in America. You prolong adolescence to an absurd degree. You don't prioritize maturity. But at the same time, you sexualize your children very early. I mean, you've got, like, third graders twerking, you know, and singing explicit song lyrics, and then you put that on social media for everyone to see. You're teaching kindergartners about sex masturbation about homosexuality and transgenderism you think that prepubescent children can decide to have their genitals removed before they even know what they're actually for you put little girls in beauty contests and try to turn them into you know miniature beyonce's and cardi b's singing about wop i mean 12 percent. i saw a study 12 percent of uh, 12 year olds in the u.s are already sexually active at 12. now 6.5 percent of them had actually already engaged in anal sex by the age of 12. The majority of sex offenders in the West victimize children, and they say about 90% of uh, sexual assaults on children are never even reported. So imagine what the real numbers are. No, you have a pedophilia problem in the West. And no matter how much you wish you could, you can't shift that over to us. We're not going to help you justify your sickness. You don't raise your children. <laughs> Straight to the point on you. This guy right here from Gaza, I guess. And he's he just explained that a nine-year-old is more mature than a 25-year-old over here in America. A nine-year-old in Gaza is more mature than a 25-year-old over there in America. In, in, over here in America, he said that over here in America they don't pri prioritize prioritize maturity for the children. No, they don't. They give them Disney Channel. They create. They give them SpongeBob and all these characters, these non-fiction characters. I mean these fiction character characters, excuse me, and make them and everybody just want to be a kid. The land where you never grow, you uh, never stop being a kid. What's that Peter Pan and all this stuff? It doesn't and, and it doesn't help with the children in, in facing life. He said that uh, uh, they got third graders all turking, over sexualized, and they put it on the social media for everybody to see. He said twelve percent of 12 year olds are already sexually active and and 6.5 percent i think he said is already engaged in anal sex man and this is true these are this is true and then in america is going around the world world and trying to push their sick their sickness on everybody else but look at the results of the uh of the american generations you can't even go nowhere like just just recently man um it was a mob of Jakes. They was just went to the movies and everybody started fighting out where I stay at. Every time I go on social media, anywhere they try to get, do a gathering, it always end up in fighting and somebody's shooting and somebody's dead. 14-year-old dead. 12-year-old dead. They full of anger. You know? It's the music. It's the food. It's the music. It's the oppression. It's the money. <laughs> This place is through.
That's why it's titled that. It's Sirach chapter 7, verse 23. It says, Has thou children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. So if you have children, you're supposed to instruct them in righteousness. You're supposed to get them ready to get older and, and to carry themselves. Not over-sexualize them and teach them how to twerk. You know, and teach them, tell them that they're going to be a child forever. No, you, you, you let them know they're going to be adults. It says, has thou daughters have a care for their body and show not thyself cheerful towards them. See, so if you have a daughter, you're supposed to take a super care for your daughter because she could become a harlot. You know, she could become a, a real bad adulterer. You're supposed to take care for her body. You're not supposed to just let her put on anything. You're not supposed to just let her run rampant like you see in America. So now you got these girls, you know, they'll fool you. They'll be an underage girl, but they... But the way they're dressed and everything, you think they're a super grown woman. You know? And you're not supposed to show yourself cheerful towards them. You're supposed to be serious towards them. So they can understand not to play. Because all, 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 all women want to do and girls want to do is have fun. They got to know when, when time to have fun and when to turn it off. You're supposed to instruct your children on that early. But not in America. It says, marry thy daughter, and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter, but give her to a man of understanding, which that's not going on over here in America. These women are just jumping from, from man to man and man to man. Matter of fact, there's a there's a term. It's called monkey branching. And I just figured this. The spirit led me right to this video right here. Monkey branch. I never heard of this, but this, check this uh, term out. Monkey branching. Stop treating your girlfriend like a wife. The beloved wife has privileges that the girlfriend will never have. This is why women go from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend. She thought she could do better. She thought she could do better. And they always monkey branch 100% of the time, which means this. They're hanging on to you while grabbing the hand of another man. When that hand is tight and secure, they let go of you. When they're done with him, they go to another man. That's monkey branching. Women monkey branch their entire and then they get tired of it, then they finally settle down. Women settle all the time. They will go through men like you and me, like a hot knife through butter, until they find the guy that will give them the best vacations and the best lifestyle. Women always want to marry up and across. Always, 100% of the time. If you can't improve her life and have evidence that her life is gonna be better, you are just entertaining her while she's still scanning for the guy that's going to give her a better life. And it's got nothing to do with attraction. Nothing. Women marry a lifestyle, not the man. Proverbs 31. Don't give your strength to women or your ways to that which destroys kings. Remember, she joins you. You don't join her. That's how it works. You never really know if she's going to stick around. You never really know. I get way too many emails from guys. And I leave it right there. I'm pretty sure he's saying a lot of more good points, but he's, you know, he spoke the truth. Monkey branching. That's exactly what the American woman is doing. They're monkey branching. Like he said, they they grab onto you. And then when your hand is tight on theirs, they grab it. But then they're they're getting ready to cross over. And they grab, they, they, they looking for the next man. And when they grab his hand, and when they finally get their hand, that thing secured, they grab it, they let go of you and move on to the next man. And like he said, they move across and up. That's all they do. That's what American, um, the way of America has produced these women. That That's what it's produced. You know? And like he said, they don't marry, they don't marry you, the man, over here in America, these women. They marry the lifestyle. And if they could find a dude with a better lifestyle, they're gonna leave you. It's not about attraction, it ain't about none of that. And it's sad that it's going on, but this is what the truth is, man, over here in America. This is the truth. In all these other countries around the world, they don't want to have nothing to do with this way. This evil 
<laughs> you know, slow, slow minded way. <laughs> this is this is a uh, first Timothy five and eleven. It says, but the younger widows, it says, but the younger widows refuse for when they would have begun to wax wanton against Yahawashai, they will marry. So when a woman start losing discipline, she will start marrying. She'll start sleeping around. It says, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with them, they learn to be idle, wandering from house to house. And not only idle, but tylers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. And that, that, that's running rampant in America. These women are jumping from house to house and everybody's business from man to man, spreading chaos and confusion, monkey branching. It says, I would therefore that the younger widow, widow, I'm a younger woman, Mary, bear children, God the house, give on them none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, reproachfully, for some already have turned aside after Satan. So if you went to the scriptures, it eliminates all that wickedness. You have a guideline, but you have to follow the scripture. Like I said, the young woman, woman Mary, get with your one husband. Bear children guide the house. That'll keep you occupied, cleaning and dealing with those kids. It'll keep you from Esau being able to manipulate you. Because a lot of women is already gone. As you hear this man explaining. They monkey branching and they on to the next. Alright? They monkey branching on to the next like this one chick, Brittany, Brittany Renner. And she was with Charles... Um, she was with Charleston White on that podcast, you know. And she just, she started, they asked her about her husband, that she, for her NBA husband that she got over on. And she just, the demon came out of her. You know, she didn't like that because she got put on blast. So the demon came out of her. She started acting like a, like a monkey. <laughs> Let's play this next thing here because you see how America makes you slow. It makes you retarded, man. It makes you think off. You know, let's play this next thing here, dealing with criminal records. I hired a pair of young white men and a pair of young black men. And for each pair, I randomly assigned one individual in the pair a criminal record. What this means is none of the young men in the study who are posing as job applicants actually had criminal records in real life. But for the purposes of these applications, they communicated to employers that they had a felony conviction. So looking first at the outcomes for white testers, we see that about 34% of whites with no criminal record received a callback or job offer compared to just 17% of whites with a criminal record. So we see that a criminal record reduces employment opportunities by about 50%. In the case of black testers, 14% of those with no criminal background received a callback or job offer relative to just 5% of blacks with a criminal record. When we compare the outcomes of the black and white testers side by side, what's most striking is the direct effect of race on the outcomes of these young men. A black applicant with no criminal background received callbacks or job offers at about half the rate of an equally qualified white applicant. But the most surprising finding was really related to blacks with no criminal background relative to whites with a felony conviction. We find that a white applicant with a felony conviction fared just as well, if not better, relative to a black applicant with a clean record. This suggests that being black in America today is essentially like having a felony conviction in terms of one's chances of finding employment. I hired a pair of young. So this woman um, experiment proved that being being an Israelite, being dark skinned because she's saying black, but no, that's just being an Israelite. OK, especially of the tri the, the Negroid looking tribe judah benjamin and levi you know if you look like southern kingdom you look like a negro you have the same effect of, of and you an israelite so being dark-skinned automatically puts you cut you in more than half of receiving on uh, receiving employment and this has been going on Jake been struggling since the 1900s of, of with employment, uh, with employment, still to this day. She said that a white, a white man with a felony 
had had equal or even better chances of getting a job than a a, a so-called black man with a clean record. You know, in that an Edomite with a clean record and a Jake with a clean record. Oh, the Edomite was up there and basically in a hundreds, hundred percent, and and Jake was fifty percent. It's just like you know. This this society was set up so that we won't be successful. The scriptures told us that, you know, we would not be successful here. You know, you got to take what you can and, you know, you got to, you know, you work what you can and you do what you do. And but but at the, we at the end anyway, man, it's it just that the, this is coming out. It's coming all out. It's all coming out. This Deuteronomy 28 and 43. It says the stranger that is within thee should get above thee very high. And that shall come down very low. So Esau is on the high. We are on the low. It says he shall lend to thee, to thee and thou shall not lend to him. He should be the head and thou shall be the tail. So Esau basically got the upper up on us. And now that we at the end of this damn devil's reign, all the information is just coming out left and right about what the hell has been going on the whole time. Jake been mad about they can't get jobs. They can't do. Man, the system was set up against you. Let's play this next clip we have here. Check this out. This is back in 1995 in Inglewood, California. Check this clip out, man. It was really related. Got to make a living the best way we can. If that means by selling dope, I guess we got to sell dope. Ain't nobody rich in the ghetto. Nobody rich in the ghetto. If we was rich, we wouldn't be here. I ain't gonna be out here every day out here gang banging, man. After I graduate from high school, I'm going somewhere. I ain't gonna be out here every day. There ain't shit out here but pain. Fuck this shit. If I had a chance to start over again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn down that wrong path. I'd try to go the right way. Get my education, I wouldn't be here. I'd would, I would be here today, but I'd be, in, I'd be in the right mind. I wouldn't be gang banging. I'd be telling y'all a whole different story about a good life. Be a whole different story. I go to the school right here. See, because right now I be going to yep. school every day. I don't, I, right now I do not miss school a day. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to have that education, man. Because the white man is not going to let you do shit. A high school diploma ain't nothing no more. You got to have a, you got a master in something. High school diploma ain't nothing no more, man. You can't even work at McDonald's with a high school diploma. That's why I'm going you know, to try to be something. And when I get up, I'm going to take them up with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to leave none of my friends or family in the ghetto. Because they shit. We got to tell the little generation how to, how to grow. See, nobody told us you can't be gang. That ain't good for you. That ain't good for you. No, they let us grow up the gang bang. It's too late now. I ain't saying it's too late, but, you know, it ain't never too late. It ain't, ne it ain't never too late, but we got to tell the next generation before they grow up and be like us. It ain't, it ain't even it. How to make a living the best way. Man. <laughs> that video was powerful, man. You know, it just shows a lot. This was back in 1995 in Inglewood, California. In Inglewood, California, you basically, that's 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 L.A., okay? That's L.A. with all the game banging and all of that. that the Inglewood is right in there. You know what I'm saying? And like you heard these men saying, they got to sell dope. They got to game bang just to um, survive. And you can see they were young back then. So this was 95. They look like they're at least 12 years old, 12, 11 years old at the time. So these guys are still alive, you know, in their 40s, late 30s, 40s, you know. You know, I don't know, you know, maybe they, it looked like these type of jakes, though. You know, he probably in jail, end up got shot or something, you know. But this is what the system produced, you know, this is what the system produced. This is what Esau Edom wanted. And this is what we had to fight through as being an Israelite. You know, I remember these little times. I got faint memories of this stuff back then like that. It's just terrible. America, this is what America has done. You know what I mean? And you see Jake encouraging each other, man. I'm trying. When I get up, I'm gonna take my man with me and all this stuff. You know, Jake got those, 
they got those them dreams and them aspirations, but the curses is just they like I said, they're going the curses in Deuteronomy 28, starting at 15 on down, it said they're gonna overtake you. They're gonna pursue you and overtake you until you be destroyed. We're destroyed. And that Esau Edom was the one that that did it. You know? America. This is Jeremiah 50 and 11. It says, But ye were but ye were glad because you were you I'm sorry, let me start that over. It says, But ye were glad because you rejoiced, O ye destroyers of my heritage, because you are grown fat as the heifers at grass and the bellow as the bulls. So Esau Edom, you are a destroyer of the Heavenly Father's heritage. You don't want that put that game banging and that drugs all out there and it destroyed us. Killed our families off. Gun violence and game bang violence and drug overdoses. It says your mother should be sore confounded. She she that bear you shall be ashamed. So America, you came out of Great Britain. That's your mother. And she's going to be ashamed of you because it's going to tell you. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. The hindermost of the nations is America. Your mother going to see you burn. You know? Great Britain going to see you burn. All right? Because you're going to become a wilderness. Because what you did to the Lord's people, it says, because of the wrath of the Lord, it should not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that go by Babylon should be astonished and hish at her plagues. So this place is going to be completely annihilated. Ain't going to be nobody over here. Ain't going to be no more wickedness to run rampant over here no more. Ain't going to be no more oppression and all this that you see on the video, man. Way back in 1995. Now look at the, we're in 2023. Now look how far worse it ain't got. It ain't got way worse. All because of this Edomite, this damn devil, man. He's the one to be blamed. The Lord has allowed us to blame you because you're the one that funded this and systematically set this in place. But it's all good, man. Through the spirit power, y'all, about Shai, it's, it's this is just your shame coming out. And it's time for you, Edomites, to be judged. You finna go for your little stanky new world order where you're gonna try to kill off a lot of people and continue. And your, your rampage of rick wickedness, but the Lord Yahweh Shai gonna come in and throw a monkey wrench right in your machine and watch your machine start smoking to explode in nuclear destruction. So, yeah, hey, through the spirit power, Yahweh Shai, throughout it for you, brethren and sisters that stopped by, been under the current events, prophecy, and madness. Uh, America, will make you, America will make you retarded. All right, so hey, through the spirit of the Lord, I hope you, brothers and sisters, are edified out there. You stay strong. Y'all about your mouth shot. Brock a thumb. I keep step. Shalom.